Hi, this is Ken from Iron Sky. A couple of weeks ago, I did an unboxing of the P2 Pro V2 flight controller from GE. And uh, today, I'm going to do a quick rundown of uh, its features. And of course, uh, what's different uh, from its predecessor, which is the P2 Pro, uh, which was released a year ago. Uh, I'm also going to do a quick connection test and uh, show you how to set it up and do basic calibration of uh, the entire FC without actually mounting it on a quad um, just yet or any drone for that matter. The flight controller package comes with a few major components that includes the P2 Pro V2 flight controller, the power module, the LED indicator, status uh, which has spots a RGB LED and also of course the GPS module. The V2 is actually quite similar to its older brother the P2 Pro. The only difference in terms of size is the V2 is slightly thicker and just a tad shorter than the P2 Pro. The The difference in thickness is due to the V2's relocation of its UART ports to the top here instead of being in parallel as was the case with the P2 Pro. The various connectors of the V2 includes a COM1 which is a UART connector to the USB on the PC for firmware upgrades and also the assistance software connection. The LED module connects to the LED port here. The COM2 is reserved for a secondary GPS uh, which I was told will be enabled in a future update and uh, I am actually quite excited by this because uh, that will enable the RTK feature which it means that the V2 will be a dual GPS supporting FC and it will bring the accuracy of the GPS down to centimeter level and uh, the COM3 port here will output uh, the telemetry data for OSD and also the data link uh, module. On the left side of the FC um, or at least the below connectors are the output ports for the motors M1 through M8 so this will go from the first motor to the uh, eighth motor uh, for octo configurations on the right, you have the straight connectors, which are reserved for the uh, power module, the uh, GPS module. They also have an A1 and A2 for future accessories uh, to be connected to the uh, V2, um, but they are currently locked. There's also the RC channels, um, channel 1 through channel 6. And uh, the channel 1, you can actually put in either a PPM or a SBUS connector. So, uh, the V2 also supports more than 6 channels for various uh, flight modes. Um, but you can only access uh, channel 7 and 8 from uh, the SBUS connection. In connecting the V2 to its uh, peripherals, uh, I'll start with uh, the receiver, um, a Valkera one that I found lying around, and it's PWM. So I'll just uh, put them into the six channels connection. Okay, and then um, I won't be using the power module for now, at least uh, because I'll be powering up with uh, the USB connector. Next, I'll put in the LED module here, and the LED module is connected. Of course, uh, I will also connect the GPS, which is on the second connector here. And finally, I will put in the uh, USB cable. To the USB side and you can see that immediately it's now springing up to life uh, with the LED indicator 
pulsing. Okay, I'm going to shift uh, the view to the setup and um, the installation of uh, the firmware of the V2. The first step in setting up the V2 is to actually go to the G website and under the download section, we download both the online firmware upgrade tool and also the V2 assistant software and uh, install both of them. That will also install the USB drivers and we will obviously start with the V2 uploader tool which will also update the V2 to the latest uh, version. So I'm going to try doing that right now. And it's actually updating it right now. The entire process takes about two minutes and once it's done, the V2 will actually reboot itself. Next up, I have uh, launched the V2 assistant software and in order to connect to the V2, I need to select the correct COM ports. In my case, it's COM3 and how I searched this was through device manager uh, under ports, COM and LPT. The USB serial port will be installed once you install the assistant software along with the USB drivers. I'll go ahead and press connect. Immediately you will be greeted with the overview screen, which is a very simple dashboard to show the aircraft type, the RC type, uh, the gain settings, RC channel. I'm going to move them as uh, my controller is connected. It also has the voltage settings and the uh, return um, to land or RTL settings here. You can also go straight to real data where you will see all the information um, of the FC display and you see that including compass and uh, the IMU all are working uh, including all the RC channels. So this will give you a very early indication that everything is fine and it's working and I will need to do some uh, um, setup. From the overview, we go to basic settings and uh, the first tab is actually the frame selection. And by default, it will have selected the Quad X configuration, which will possibly be the same configuration that I will be testing on once I mount this um, to my test rig. You can also do a motor test here which is convenient um, so that you'll be able to check the direction of spin of your motors. I do not have the ESCs connected yet, but one word of caution, please, please do not install the propellers first when you're doing this um, to avoid any accidents or mishaps. Apart from uh, the IMU direction and also the GPS installation direction in relation to your frame, you can also specify the distance it is away from the center of gravity of your frame. Uh, for both the IMU and the GPS. The RC tab lets you set up all aspects of the remote control and uh, you will be able to set the receiver type um, at first, the either PPM, PWM or SBUS. Uh, for my case, I'm actually using PWM currently. The second section is actually to set a channel. Um, currently, it is uh, channel 6. Uh, to set it to a two-way switch so you can manually switch in RTL mode. The RC Calibrate here will show you all the uh, settings for all the four channels, the Aerolon, Elevator, Throttle and Yaw. To calibrate the RC sticks, I can move them around and of course I will press on the Rocker Calibration. And I will move all my sticks to the maximum possible positions. Uh, this also includes uh, the sticks or the switches for 
the flight modes and return home functions. Once I'm done, I'll press on end calibration and ensuring that all the sticks are in the middle before pressing OK. And it has uh, completed the calibration for me. So I press OK, calibration successful, now I'm done. There's a total of 9 flight modes available to the V2. This is quite a lot more than uh, the original P2 Pro. The uh, flight modes available for this includes uh, the stabilized mode, altitude hold mode, GPS speed mode, um, which in contrary to the GPS angle mode, you control the speed of the craft um, by pushing on the pitch or the roll and uh, it will have a linear acceleration. The, the more that you press, the faster it goes. A smart circle mode, um, where um, this is the same as the, the P2 Pro uh, version, where it will make the craft circle a point of interest, and uh, the pitch will control the radius in which it will um, do the circling, and the roll will control the direction and speed of um, the circling. The agricultural mode is a strange one. Uh, maybe because it's still quite weak to me. Um, however, from what I've gleaned uh, from the manual, it is uh, a mode where it will be used for plantations um, in terms of spraying fertilizers and uh, pesticides. The behavior in which of uh, this Flight mode includes uh, the moving from side to side, three meters to the left to the right while it is actually spraying. And it also provides a method to trigger the uh, spraying of uh, the payload onto the uh, plantation. Um, however, um, I will probably need to get more information on how this works and how the trigger mechanism works. I think it has something to do with uh, the channel 7 and 8. Uh, which is only accessible through SBUS or PPM. The Smart Turn feature um, will mix the roll channel and the yaw channel um, so that uh, with uh, just the roll channel, you'll be able to not only bank but turn um, the quad at the same time. This will make for some interesting maneuvers and uh, make it simple um, to um, do so as well. The other two new flight modes um, for the V2 um, includes a cruise control. And um, we have here the cruise C and the cruise V. Uh, I will try to explain a little bit on uh, what's different between those two. Um, the cruise control is when you engage it, it will maintain the speed and the heading um, of your craft. Uh, the way to use it is uh, you'll be on GPS loiter mode and then uh, you are going on a certain direction at a certain speed and you switch it over to cruise control and the flight controller will maintain um, that heading and the speed. Uh, this is will be very useful um, for dolly shots or um, shots where you are actually following a straight line and then uh, you can free up um, yourself to control the uh, panning or the uh, direction of the camera while the drone is actually moving in a straight line. The difference between Cruise C and Cruise V is uh, in Cruise V, you'll be allowed to change um, the speed and the heading of um, the craft um, while it is on cruise control. Um, the way to do this is while in the cruise control mode, you can change the speed by pushing on uh, the pitch uh, forward or backwards. And then once you release, uh, it will lock at a new speed. Uh, same with direction, if you change the direction while um, it is uh, in cruise mode, uh, once you release uh, back um, to center, it will continue uh, moving in its uh, new um, direction. This is where we tune the gain of the FC uh, to make it smooth um, and uh, as uh, stable as possible. Uh, it's at defaults of 50%, uh, uh, which is based on a 450mm wheelbase uh, craft, uh, very common. 
and uh, you can set it to lower for it to be um, having a little bit softer response or higher um, to make it uh, more uh, aggressively trying to maintain stability. Um, of course, uh, if you set it too high, um, you'll find that um, your uh, craft tends to um, vibrate. Apart from the FC gain, um, there's also a gain setting for um, the remote control stick movements. Uh, this will affect uh, how responsive the craft will be um, to your stick movements. Um, the lower it is, uh, will make s uh, the stick movements uh, slower and uh, the craft will respond uh, in kind. And uh, if you set it to um, high, uh, it will make it uh, more responsive. Uh, it really depends on your flight style. Accelerometer calibration. Uh, there are two ways to do the calibration. One is a simpler single-sided calibrate where you just level the module on the table and do the calibration. Uh, the other one is the six-sided calibration, uh, which is uh, more similar to uh, flight controllers like Pixhawk uh, or APMs. So I'm going to try doing the calibration. First off, I'll just uh, do the single-sided calibration. Uh, all I need to do is uh, level it on the table and after a couple of seconds uh, it will show a calibration succeeded. That's uh, how um, it is done. Uh, the six-sided calibrate is a press this and then um, there's a helpful figure here to show how um, I should place. So for now it says uh, to put it level the module. I press it OK and then it asks me to move it to one side. This uh, diagram is uh, actually very useful, so I know um, how to move uh, it. And then uh, the next one is to move it to this way. Make sure that it's stable. And then the next one is to place it with the arrow facing down. This way. And I press the button again. And then for it to face upwards. Press the button again, and then finally put it upside down on a level surface, and calibration succeeded. Next up is uh, the compass calibration, and uh, as uh, with the accelerometer car calibration, there's also given uh, two modes of uh, calibration: a simple one, which is uh, two axes and another one which is uh, a spherical calibration uh, where you move it in uh, all um, directions so i'll um, try off with uh, try with the cross calibrate first so what it the steps is uh, to place it horizontally and then uh, you notice the led lights uh, is now solid orange i'll just make a twist 360 degrees in clockwise Now it's green, and then I'm going to have uh, the FC pointed upwards, and then I'm going to do a 360 degrees around. Okay. So once it's done, it will um, flash uh, quickly, and then uh, you will have a compass calibration successful. So that's the uh, cross calibrate or <coughs> two axis calibration. For a more accurate one, we will do um, spherical calibration. So um, I will also um, do a uh, quick demo on this. So sphere calibration, uh, it will give you two minutes. Uh, you have to uh, rotate it in all 360 degrees. Uh, what I usually do is I do it horizontally and then uh, I'll just uh, do a turn back to the front. And then I put it upside down, and then I'll turn it clockwise again, 360. And then I will have the FC pointed down, and then I will do a 360. And then I have it pointed to the left and to the side, and then I do a 360 this way too. And then I point it to the top, and I do a 360. And then, yeah, 
once you have uh, done sufficient uh, 360 it will say compass calibration successful and then you're done um, what I'm doing here is just a very quick demonstration of the calibration process for actual calibration um, you should be doing it all after mounting it on a drone or any time that you are moving around um, uh, same like any other drones uh, that uh, need uh, compass calibration and uh, please make sure that you are away from uh, metallic structures like the place that I am in this room uh, it definitely is uh, not a good example uh, but uh, do it away from uh, large structures and uh, magnetic um, or electromagnetic uh, interference After doing all the basic setup, uh, we move over to the advanced setup, and uh, this is where uh, we will be uh, setting up the uh, voltage sensors um, and uh, also the low voltage protection, um, the uh, FC test, and uh, the other uh, parameters. So uh, first up, the voltage. Um, on the low voltage protection, uh, you can either um, set it to go home, uh, RTL, or um, landing on where it is, or just LED alert. I usually um, put it to LED alert because I do not want it to suddenly um, try to come back or, or land uh, when it has a low um, battery warning. I usually monitor that really closely. The protection voltage uh, is uh, depending on uh, the number of cells uh, that you have. Um, this here obviously is set up for 3S. Uh, and uh, the first level protection will be 10.8 and uh, that's where the LED will start flashing and then the second level is where uh, it will trigger the low voltage protection. And uh, the other uh, section here is the voltage calibration and uh, this will actually um, be used to calibrate your uh, voltage reading um, that's uh, coming from the uh, power module. Uh, but because I am connected only uh, by uh, USB, so it's a current, uh, the uh, voltage is actually uh, 4.3 um, volts, uh, which is uh, correct. But um, in order to do the calibration, what you need to do is uh, use uh, one of uh, these voltage monitors. Uh, plug it into your battery as you have connected and then uh, you enter the voltage reading, the actual voltage reading into the calibration here and then your uh, voltage shall, shall be um, calibrated properly. Okay, after doing that, uh, I'll move on over to the FC test and um, this is where it will actually test uh, quickly um, all the parameters uh, in your FC and see that uh, if you are ready to take off or not. Um, roll and pitch uh, 0 0.2, uh, I'm actually quite level right now. So if I'm moving uh, my uh, flight control a little bit, you'll see that it's uh, changing real, in, in real time. And then uh, I'll do a very quick uh, self-check. And then it will uh, test the RC is connected, uh, normal, the uh, IMU itself is normal, uh, the barometer is normal, uh, the compass is normal. And then the GPS, obviously I'm indoors right now, so uh, there's a bad GPS signal, which is fine. And the arm, it really depends on uh, what mode you're at. So in the basic under RC, currently uh, I'm on... The assistance software also provides a very simple FC test uh, for some of the basic parameters um, to see whether all the basic uh, parameters are ready um, for it to arm. And uh, you can see here that uh, I also have uh, on top section the uh, roll and pitch uh, values. Uh, as uh, my FC is lying flat on uh, the table, it should be close to zero after calibration. And then uh, if I'm moving it around, it will show the uh, roll in and pitch in positive or negative values. Yeah. Um, on the lower section here has uh, uh, the self-test um, for RC, uh, the IMU itself, the barometer, compass, um, the GPS, and also the arm. So uh, depending on uh, the mode that you have, uh, it will actually um, let you arm uh, with or without um, GPS signal. Okay, so uh, if your RC is connected, um, the RC uh, obviously will be normal. The IMU will be uh, the calibration of uh, the uh, accelerometer. Uh, barometer uh, is also normal, reading normal. 
um, compass after you have done the compass calibration it should show normal as well uh, it is normal that the GPS uh, is uh, having uh, no signal because I am indoors currently and then if I do the test it will say bad GPS signal and uh, the uh, arm is uh, disabled so I can't actually arm it because I'm actually in uh, one of the uh, GPS uh, enable mode um, and uh, this can be checked uh, back at the uh, basic under RC and then uh, it's either okay so I'm actually go home uh, or uh, if uh, now I'm setting it to stabilize mode uh, this is not the GPS mode and now if I go back to advanced and I do the self test again it says arm enable so basically I can actually arm it it won't be top the GPS signal After the test, uh, there's uh, the other tab here, and uh, this is where more advanced parameters can be set, and uh, there's a lot more um, setting compared to the P2 Pro. Uh, now you have uh, things like uh, the um, RTL heading, so you can actually uh, make the uh, uh, craft come back to you um, facing you or the backwards towards you. So um, the difference here is that uh, if uh, uh, you want it to always uh, face having the back facing to you so that just in case uh, you um, take control of the craft you know what direction to turn or what direction is facing actually. Uh, altitude is uh, the return home altitude and then the landing velocity um, by default is uh, 30 centimeters per second and I think we leave it here um, because it's the same setting as the P2 Pro and uh, it actually touches down quite gently. Um, GPS uh, parameters um, you have uh, quite a number of uh, things that you can set. So speed dampening, um, you will actually uh, dampen the speed of um, your craft uh, as uh, you are accelerating or decelerating um, so that uh, it will not uh, uh, go um, uh, too fast or, or um, uh, abruptly um, accelerate. Uh, brake coefficient, so this one is uh, the braking. Uh, that means uh, in uh, GPS mode when you are moving in one direction and then you let go of the stick, uh, how fast uh, it tries to stop itself. Um, if uh, this coefficient is uh, put high, uh, it will have a noticeable um, uh, jerkiness and uh, if it is uh, set to lower, it should uh, smoothen out a little bit more and uh, it will close to a stop. And then you also have a, a max uh, uh, and a max ascending and descending uh, velocity um, in meters. So it's a five meter per second uh, going up, and uh, max uh, descent is uh, three meters coming down. Uh, max speed of the uh, the drone itself uh, will be um, five meters per second. Uh, this is this is a quite uh, quite standard and then uh, you can uh, modify from there and then also of course uh, the max angle um, that you can go um, so it can be between uh, 10 to 30 degrees yeah and then uh, if you mouse over each one of these it actually shows you the maximum settings like uh, speed dampening uh, 1 uh, 0 to 5 uh, brake coefficient is 0 to 20 uh, the acceleration will be between, uh, uh, sorry, the ascending uh, speed uh, is uh, between 0 to 10 and uh, also the descending speed is 0 to 5. Max speed uh, is uh, 20 uh, meters per second and uh, max angle is uh, 30 degrees. So also uh, you have uh, some control over the uh, autopilot meaning uh, the uh, when you are actually having uh, waypoints uh, from the ground station. So you have the speed during uh, in between waypoints. So it's uh, set uh, by default uh, five uh, meter per second. Uh, descending velocity one point five and uh, ascending velocity is uh, two point five. Uh, so this is uh, during when you are running uh, waypoint modes. And then the other setting here is the uh, motor idle mode. Uh, it is uh, uh, once you arm it, uh, it will go into idle, and then uh, your motors will spin. So it, to show that it's uh, already been uh, been armed, and then uh, you can actually change this uh, between uh, not turning at all, uh, very slow, which is the default, uh, slow, medium, and fast. So that, that's uh, based on your uh, preference. And then uh, the other uh, section here is actually the fence, and 
the fence uh, will is uh, basically uh, a limitation uh, of uh, how far or how high um, your craft will fly and uh, you can actually turn them on and off uh, individually so um, this is an alt uh, altitude limit uh, and uh, you can say um, by default it's 100 meters uh, um, and then um, the distance, uh, how far is it from your uh, current position or at least the takeoff position so um, by default it's set to 300 uh, and uh, it's off currently so there's no fencing but of course if you turn it on then you can actually select uh, what action to take when it actually hits this fence, this uh, uh, virtual fence. So either it will limit, that means it will bounce off uh, this this uh, limit so that it will try to come back uh, below, uh, or it will try to land immediately, or it will activate RTL. So this is uh, some of the, uh, the, the, the settings you can do for the fence. And uh, of course, uh, always um, there will be a restore factory settings uh, to turn this all um, back to the default settings just in case uh, uh, you scrub the settings and forgot um, what the basic uh, default settings are. Okay, so um, the last thing that I want to show is actually the real data uh, a monitor. So this is a monitor of all the parameters uh, on um, your FC. Uh, anything to do uh, from uh, the GPS itself uh, to the IMU. So if uh, I start moving it around, you'll see the uh, the values change. Okay, um, and also of course the altitude um, changes as I go from the table um, going up. So you can see the altitude is working. Okay, um, it also has a temperature here um, and of course the compass. So if I turn this around you'll see that um, it is actually uh, working yeah so and uh, also the roll pitch and um, the your values uh, of course also the RC channel uh, RC channel values currently so if I move my sticks around you notice that the numbers are all changing yeah uh, with uh, the change and uh, you see that, that there's a reserve uh, channel 7 and channel 8 here which are 0 um, because I'm using PWM right now and there's only up to 6 uh, channels uh, that I can um, place uh, on uh, the FC itself but uh, with an S bus or a PPM you can actually expand it to 8 um, channels and then these two channels um, as I said earlier uh, they will be used uh, for uh, the agricultural um, spraying um, purposes okay so with that, um, this is a, a very uh, short or not so short uh, introduction um, to um, what the P2 um, Pro V2 uh, features are and then uh, how to set it up. Um, hopefully, it will help you um, uh, when you actually um, get the uh, uh, V2. Um, I think that it will be a, a, a very good and stable uh, uh, flight controller. Um, there are still some stuff that I haven't um, discussed here, uh, things like uh, the ground station, uh, but I will reserve that for when I, uh, we actually mount this um, onto a, uh, a quad or a, a hexa um, that I have installed uh, to do the actual flight testing. And then we will do one more round of uh, full uh, feature testing. And uh, hopefully uh, by then I'll be able to um, showcase to you uh, what the FC can do. Um, thanks so much for watching and uh, as usual, uh, if you like the video, please uh, subscribe uh, to my channel, uh, Iron Sky, and uh, do leave some comments if you have uh, questions uh, or um, improvement uh, suggestions. Thanks so much uh, for um, staying with us and uh, see you all next time.